All right. So we got another C++ program, uh, and it's named Debugging Assertions. And to get started in this program, I'll go ahead and uh, flush out all this code right here. And in our main program, I'm also going to flush out the code too. As a lot of this program, or a lot of this demonstration I'm going to show you, is going to be based off of revisions rather than me. Um, you know, showcasing stuff. So, um, here it is. Um, it looks like we got functional code, right? Um, in our main program, we got an integer num equals nine. Uh, we call the assert function that um, has this expression here that it will pass along up here into expression and then we'll increment by one and then we'll call the assert function again uh, passing num into this and then passing this whole expression up here now right here we decided to make a macro called debug and we're going to assign it to one in this case because it is one it will fall into this first if condition um, it's only if it's else if, else if it is a zero, it will drop down to here, and then this is the end if. But in this case, we don't need to worry about this uh, because we got one, so we're definitely going to be dropping down into this uh, code block here. So we'll define it. Uh, we're going to take that whole chunk do a C out statement and we're going to go ahead and uh, dump it into the stringizer which will output num uh, less than 10 then it's going to output the string and then we're going to output num as it was originally passed which will be a uh, 9 uh, the first time around um, if the expression turns out to be untrue it will drop down into this um, so once this expression is untrue, like once we start incrementing, because it'll pass it along again uh, to where it'll be 10, less than 10, it'll be not true, and then it's going to start doing uh, this. But the first time around, it will be true, so it'll skip the if and go right to the else where it'll say it'll succeed following that string. The second time... Um, we pass into this um, function because we do call it again. It'll do a C out. It'll spit out the string. Then we're going to pull a predefined uh, macro called file. And then in file, we'll pull the file location of the CPP file. Then it'll spit out the string called that line. And then line will show at which line it decides to fail at. Um, and it will be at, in this line actually, in this case at 26, because this is where we called the function and it, it decided to be no good. Um, and if we were to try to run the program right now, obviously we're piled with errors. For one, it says this declaration has no storage class or type specifier. Expected this. Don't worry about that, because this is just kind of taking an out of context syntax at this point, and that not expected there. So, what's the issue here? Well, upon doing a little bit of experimenting, apparently if you were to backspace, move it up there, it calms down. And then if we were to do this, comes on that expression but let's put it back to our original neater format apparently for it to be happy it wants everything to be in one line now what can we do about this how can we make it so our program falls into one line without reformatting everything so we have one super ugly long line well 
Um, there is a solution to this. And here it is with these comments. We can use a backslash at the end of each line. This will allow the definition to continue onto the next line. And it looks like uh, this. Do that. See how this is all happy now? All happy and dandy. And then let's tab over, do that. And now that's starting to get all happy. Let's just trickle this down. Let's get our backslashes. And uh, to make things neater, let's extend it out. That's happy. That's happy. That's happy. That's all we need. We will need that one eventually. So we'll do that. Now it's as if everything's, you know, all in place. But it's still unhappy because it's saying identifier file is undefined. And that is because we messed up, or I messed up, on this uh, underscore file underscore and underscore line underscore is incorrect they need to have a double underscore so this so you got to watch out they're not official we run it we get another error stating that line is undefined it wants to do this to make a because the official uh, predefined macro has two underscores apparently. Now, if we were to run the uh, program at this point, it works. Aha! Uh -huh. So, it'll see out the uh, stringized uh, expression, then our dots, and then it will pull out the num. It succeeds because it's true, but then this will end up being false because it's not true. When uh, 10 is uh, less than 10, no, is equal to it, but not less. So it fails, and, and then it'll call this uh, predefined macro, which will get my uh, folder uh, breadcrumbs, and then it'll do at line, and then sh sure enough, it's at 31, because that's where the perpetrator is. That is cool. And uh, some additional comments here. So defining a, an assert macro will evaluate a specified condition for a Boolean value. Um, debug macro will control the placement of the else if statement. If we were to uh, do this, should drop down to here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what is going on. So, so something is not happy about that. Let's see what happens if I do this. So it's not, it's not registering. Do that backslash. It's not recognizing that token. So, so we gotta watch out for something. It's definitely not happy with. Ah, uh, you saw the issue there? There are three hidden tabs. 
See? Here's the next note. Do not proceed it with, um, uh, let's put it into the right. Do not proceed it with any character or it'll fall out of syntax. So not those hidden tabs, not with an A. You want it just with that slash. With that said, if we run it, it'll do C out, number is num. 10 because that's all we did just a simple statement that is true and that is yeah so yeah that's all for that also um, assert and uh, debug these aren't really keywords supposedly I think they're just a standardization um, so just to show you that they're not doing anything fancy I'll call it a debug. It'll run just the same. And if uh, we mix mismatch, ah. There's probably some sort of logic that, um, that I really don't care to explain there, but that works. Um, but essentially, to summarize what we uh, need to focus on is, you gotta watch the syntax with these backslash, well, first of all, this is what the back backslashes can kind of just, you know, uh, con continue definition to each line, and then you wanna not do any follow up with any scare characters or he'll fall out of syntax and you gotta make sure you got double underscores on those and then our uh, boolean fancy if else program with these two past functions will work as we want and we can switch back and forth like this so cool